Green mac algae belong to the division of Chlorophyta, which are often green in color when you observe them under the microscope. Like other microalgae, green microalgae lives in most of the aquatic environment. So how do these green microalgae relate to the aquatic invertebrates around them? Do their interaction bring an impact to the human community? Perhaps understanding the relationships between chlorella and rotifers will lead us to the answer. Chlorella is one of the famous microalgae genera that have been widely used in microalgae industry. It is burger to such burger shape and has its Latin name which means little green microalgae. Its relative size was between 2 to 10 micrometer in diameter. This could make people overlook this green microalga when they observe the microalgae population from the nutrient rich waters where cholera usually live. Besides its size, the most significant characteristic for cholera is the presence of parietal chloroplasts which could almost fill itself entirely. Despite its relatively small sizes compared with other microalgae, chlorella is widely used in fruit production, liquid extraction for a new source of renewable energy, and to feed the fish larvae in aquaculture. Rotifers is one of the most common zooplankton which could be found almost everywhere, as long as there was water. You could find rotifer in a pond, in rainwater, in the sea, or even in the small aquarium where you keep your lovely goldfish. It is widely used in aquaculture and research studies, as well as an obstacle for microalgae productions. Since rotifer has an average size which is smaller than the gap of the fish larvae, it is suitable to feed on many types of fish larvae, from fin fish to shellfish. Rotifers are liable to be cultured. They have short lifespan and are sensitive to the environment. This allows rotifers to pick out a simple and cheap bioindicator for toxicity tests in any aquatic environment, as well as a model organism to study gerontology. Chlorella and rotifer had a significant prey and predator relationships. Chlorella was one of the major food sources to rotifer. This explains the reason for rotifer as one of the most common pests in microalgae agriculture that microalgae farmers want to get rid of. Their prey and predator relationships were straightforward, allow people to prefer chlorella as the green microalgae species used to feed on rotifer. This is useful to culture rotifer as a feeding stock to feed the fish larvae in aquaculture. Several studies had used both chlorella and rotifer, especially chlorella vulgaris with rotifer, to observe the impact of environment factors on the morphology of rotifers or their prey and predator relationships as well as their populations. The feeding behavior of rotifer reduced the profits gain in the microalgae agriculture industry. This phenomena allow microalgae farmers to consider the presence of rotifer as one of the obstacles that microalgae farmers and scientists need to overcome to protect the population of cholera without changing the lipid content and nutrient content in it. The relationships between chlorella and rotifer and their impact on agriculture allow them to become one of the topics used in scientific studies. The purpose of these studies was to find out the appropriate ways to reduce the population of rotifer in the microalgae culture without reducing the population of chlorella as well as its chemical properties. To conclude, chlorella and rotifer have significant prey and predator relationships with each other. Their relationships become one of the obstacles to the microalgae production but somehow scientists manage to make use of their relationships for scientific investigation. Since both of these two organisms benefit to the human population, maybe one day scientists could come up with a method that effectively separates rotifers and cholera while culturing rotifer that had been separated as a new source of income besides chlorella. This could be the end of this video. I am Celine and I hope you learned something new today.